In the quiet Kent village of River, the members of the Dover Choral Society raise their voices. For John Ravenhill, music and choir practice are the centre of his life. He's an enthusiastic bass. Music has always been um, an es essential part of my life. I enjoy singing. But only a couple of years ago, John, together with his wife and daughters, thought that music making and much else which required John's memory might become a thing of the past. The girls on their own had noticed, and so had I, we hadn't said anything to each other, that he was, in fact, getting things wrong. In 2007, John started to display early symptoms of memory loss and a slight personality change, making him unusually argumentative. Our huge problem was to decide what to do about it. You've got to decide how you're going to say to the person, you know, I think there's something wrong with you and not upset them because he was totally unaware. When Jerry was diagnosed with breast cancer the same year, that crisis finally convinced John that he also had a problem. I was diagnosed with breast cancer and John was so upset by this that um, he did lose it. What happened when is, is uh, in my mind, just scrambled. You were totally shaken by it and um, didn't know whether you were coming or going. And I don't think you realised how much until you went to Coral and somebody said, an ex-doctor in fact said, and how's Jerry getting on? Yeah. And you almost said, who's that? That's when I suddenly, my mind went total blank. Just for words, pictures I knew what was happening. The words I couldn't find. I said, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. So that was the so. first time, actually, that you decided for yourself there was something more wrong with you than old age. Yeah. And that was the turning point. Mm. Pulling the, all those jars out on those shelves over there, John was a pretty good brainwave, wasn't it? Jerry is a good organiser and was able to convince her husband to see a doctor. But the visit proved as distressing as the symptoms. And Unfortunately, it didn't go too well at that point, because the young doctor that we had to see, because our own GP is very busy, um, simply said, um, well, what do you expect? You're nearly 80, and sent him out, with tears in his eyes, actually. I turned up at home here, and I was crying, and saying, I... Something, something's wrong. Somebody's told me I'm, I'm, um, I'm old. So what do you expect? And I was so bewildered, and I'd lost sort of, lost touch. I couldn't find words to express. I, being a visual person, I, I knew what I wanted to say. I couldn't find the words to say it. When I was teaching art in the, as an art teacher all his life, school. John was used to putting uh, his thoughts into pictures and now his worried wife provided the words. I put my foot down and said, it's ridiculous to say that this is old age. Yes, we're getting older, but not that fast. And it's, this has been too obvious and too rapid. And um, so I insisted that we hang around and get an appointment with um, our own doctor. And he said, get him in on any excuse and I will deal with him definitely. And he was wonderful and the next person he saw was a psychiatrist, who was also wonderful. He put me through a, a number of questions. I couldn't remember what my birthday was. And then he sort of generally t talked with me and so on. And he said, well, I think we caught you. You're right on the edge. Um, I think we can do something for you, but you, you're definitely, um, definitely starting to go off, as it were. At the end of it, he said, yes, well, you do have late onset dementia. But the good news is that um, I can prescribe Aricept, which in, will, uh, should stabilise it. I can give it to you for five years. And um, it, it, in some cases, it's even improved it. So we came away with hope. I had no idea how bad you could get, or you could get to the stage where we don't give this medicine away. <laughs> You, and you didn't you said, want me to do that, did no, you? No, well, I, you can tell that because I'm lying there with a sort of, oh, for God's sake, get on with it then. 
John was lucky that he had someone close to him alert to the problem. But, you know, that's the nicest thing that's happened to us recently because that was just a small sketch, wasn't it? And In some ways, they feel their experience has brought them closer together. But I reckon, oddly enough, that since we've both been pretty ill, we've got a new um, aspect on life. Well, I've always understood you. Well, that's true, yes. But we've got a new raison d'être, haven't yes. we? Yes, yeah. <laughs> and we've got something to fight over and something to fight for. Yeah. And something to work John's fight has been helped by being successfully treated with Aricept, a drug which helps boost the brain function and slow down the decline. It gave me a new life, really, because my memory um, increased almost instantly that I could remember things that I would have thought I'd have forgotten. Details of, of just anywhere. It was all, all became flashing up in picture form, obviously, for me, um, right back to when I was age three. You didn't think you looked like that, did you? I didn't know what I looked like, ah, did you? you know what right. you looked like? Yeah, you looked like that. Right. <laughs> They're both aware of what it's, could be lost. Uh, like well, we've known a lot of people whose um, wives or husbands have um, lost touch with one another. They almost don't talk to one another. There doesn't seem to be anything that they have in common anymore. It's, it's as if their past didn't exist or they didn't mm. have a past. But their access to Aricept was not automatic. Again, it paid to be persistent. Our local GP wouldn't prescribe it. The psychiatrist, we have to keep going back to him to prescribe it. And since we've met up with loads of other people who have um, Alzheimer's, we've discovered that not everyone prescribes it. You have to get on with each other to work in a space like this, I tell you. Jerry felt that the important thing was to face the situation and not be frightened of it. I kind of get a feeling with a lot of people that they don't want to face that there's a possibility that one of the, their, their partner or their parents have got what is, has to be called dementia and um, that therefore they don't want to find out that they have so they don't take it any further and I think an awful lot of people don't benefit from early diagnosis and Aricept for that reason. John's condition is currently manageable but as his wife and carer Jerry has to adapt her own reactions. You've really got to change your whole mindset. Really got to stand back from it all and try and imagine what it's like for the other person to genuinely not know one thing from another. There's no good being exhausted and sitting here and saying, oh, would you just start off the lunch, love? That would be lovely. Just put the potatoes in the oven and turn it on to 200 and so on, and a minute later he's out saying, what, uh, what was it I was supposed to put in the oven? Not totally incompetent. No, you're not incompetent. <laughs> put too, give too many bits of information together, yeah. and I remember the last bit, but not the first bit. John's condition also threatened his music making. Obviously, I was going off. You did find it harder and harder because you kept losing your place in the music. But when you discovered mm. that you had actually got something wrong with you... It was I mean, such a relief. Yes. To realise that it... He it, told it, all the fellow bassists and said, please, look after me. Yeah, look after me. I, I'm not going to be the fellow that I was, but I'm, I'm, I need help. All the choir knows about John's condition because John and Jerry don't see anything to be secretive about. He's got Alzheimer's. There's nothing to be ashamed of. John's diagnosis has spurred them both on to new adventures, including a first-time visit to their daughter in South Africa. Do it now before you can't. Hmm. Yes. I mean, if you're going to deteriorate, you're going to deteriorate. You can't stop that. So mm. while you feel you can, do it. Now we need a recept. Packing nowadays includes an essential new element. Because we started off at five milligrams, didn't you? Mm. And you had to move on to ten milligrams. John owes his current good fortune to an early diagnosis 
access to the right medications and a perceptive and persistent wife. Looking at Jerry is a joy because I'm aware of how much I love her, um, how, what a wonderful wife she's been. I mean, where would I be now if I hadn't had all the support um, from you? I'd be practically a dead person, I'd be a nobody.